Hello and welcome to the Roseville 2040 workshop number two for phase two of our community engagement process. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to where we've been in the comprehensive plan process and what we're asking of you now in this community engagement event. There are supplemental materials on the city's website for you to review and comment on after this presentation. First of all, what is a comprehensive plan? and why should we care about it? A lot of people don't even know that their city has a comprehensive plan. A comprehensive plan first starts with you and what you've told us about Roseville. The Roseville comprehensive plan should confirm your community vision. It's meant to reflect regional policies, but also identify important local goals and objectives. It serves as a community compass as it guides redevelopment and development but also gets more specific about specific projects like sewer, water, and other types of projects. There's also a procedure for how to amend the plan within the document itself. And why does a city have to have one? Well, beyond the fact that we're required to have one, the city's comprehensive plan helps us make decisions about the future. As you can see from the pyramid at the right, the comprehensive plan forms the basis for a lot of things the city does. For example, it helps the city make decisions about things like new development and redevelopment, housing, and how to spend parts of the budget on things like roads, water, sewer, and parks. Overall, the comprehensive plan lets the city take control of its future. The city also works with the regional government, in our case, the Metropolitan Council. The Met Council has a regional plan called Thrive 2040 that helps inform the city's comprehensive plan. The series of regional policy plans that the Met Council writes um, helps to inform the city's comprehensive plan. Those include water resources, parks, transportation, and housing. Those regional plans get updated every 10 years, and thus the city comprehensive plan gets updated every 10 years as well. The Roseville Comprehensive Plan encompasses a lot of different things. Our table of contents so far includes elements like vision, community profile, land use, housing, economic development, transportation, parks, resilience, water resources, environmental protection, and of course, implementation. We're going to get into some detail now about the directions we're headed in each of these elements. What we're going to do is show you where we're headed in these topic areas and get some of your feedback on these directions. On the next few slides, I will walk you through some of our draft goals and objectives and what we heard during our first round of public engagement. More details on each of these topics and uh, data on each of these topics can be found on the city's comprehensive plan website. There's a link at the end of this presentation. You will have the opportunity to send us your comments and your feedback and your thoughts there. Transportation. The city's vision for transportation is that the city of Roseville will have a comprehensive, safe, efficient, and reliable transportation system. Our draft goals for transportation center around having a coordinated transportation system that links with other government entities that our system is sustainable and encourages efficient use of our roadways, that it's safe and accommodates uh, the projected demand and reduces congestion, that we promote the use of transit and encourage non-motorized transportation so that our system is safe for walkers and bikers. Looking at parks, we have a set of draft goals related to maintaining our current parks recreation, and maintaining the assets that we already have, maintaining a high quality and financially sound system of parks that includes open spaces, trails, and waterways in a way that meets the recreation needs of all city residents, including um, residents from all walks of life, adding new parks and facilities to achieve equitable access across all neighborhoods, creating a well-connected system of parks, open spaces, and trails, providing our residents with opportunities to participate in a variety of recreational and learning opportunities, making sure that our 
community facilities meet the needs of our current and future residents, and preserving our natural resources like lakes, ponds, wetlands, and wooded areas. Our vision for housing relates to a lot of what the discussion that happened in the first phase of our community engagement process. The overall vision for housing is that Roseville's housing meets its community needs. We heard a lot of talk about meeting the needs of seniors, of individuals and families with low incomes, and non-traditional housing types in the city. So the overall goals that have been developed for housing include developing a coordinated strategy for housing, encouraging the development of a wide range of housing types, making sure that the housing stock is safe and well-maintained, establishing public and private partnerships to ensure life cycle housing throughout the city. That means that we have housing that is appropriate for people to live in all phases of their lives as their housing needs change. Making sure that we have a diverse mix of housing that can serve people of all different types of family types, economic statuses, and ages. Employing flexible zonings for property redevelopment and developing design guidelines to support new or renovated housing types that mixes in with our existing neighborhood character. When looking at economic development, we have a few priority sites that we're recommending the city focus on. Right now, those include the Twin Lakes site, Southeast Roseville Redevelopment Area, and the Harmar Mall. There are a few other opportunity sites as well, like the Lexington Larpenter Redevelopment Area and the Pay Cow facility. Some of those were discussed quite a bit during our phase one public engagement process. And there are a lot of ways that we're suggesting that those areas could be improved, that activity could be increased, and that more jobs could be generated. Overall, citywide, there are a few goals that we've drafted up related to economic development that we'd like to get your feedback on. Those include identifying sites in the community for possible redevelopment, developing a comprehensive marketing and messaging strategy to attract desirable businesses to the city, utilizing land use planning to enhance job growth and continued economic health, identifying the workforce needs of city businesses and facilitating partnerships, and creating the infrastructure necessary to retain and attract desirable businesses and innovative businesses. Resilience. We'd like to get your feedback on what types of goals and topics to include in our resilience and environmental protection chapter. Overall, the vision is for Roseville to be an environmentally healthy community that supports the health and wellness of community members. We'd like to get your feedback on what types of goals should be included in this chapter. Things like a water resource protection goal, air quality, greenhouse gas emission reductions, climate action planning, creating, uh, protecting the city against climate change related risks, solid waste reduction, alternative energy, natural resource and habitat protection, or maybe other things that you think we've missed. And finally, future land use. This map shows the entire city and the future land uses that are anticipated on all of the parcels of land in the city. The areas that are outlined in blue and crosshatched are areas for potential development or redevelopment areas where we think there's potential for increased activity or building on the assets that are already there. Some of those areas you'll notice correspond with the redevelopment areas that I mentioned back in the economic development slide. There is additional information on what each of these categories mean and what would be prescribed for these areas on the city's website that we would ask you to read and provide feedback on. There are several opportunities for input in addition to looking through these materials. As I mentioned earlier, the city has an online presence at cityofroseville.com slash comp plan for you to review more detail on each of these topics and give us your thoughts and feedback on the directions we're headed. There will be more information posted on social media as well, so please follow the city. We will have open house meetings in specific areas of the city for where 
future land use designations are proposed to change. Those will happen throughout the month of December and possibly into January. And later on, there will be a formal public hearing when the complete draft of the plan is completed. And that will happen in late winter or early spring. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation and we look forward to hearing from you.